dad was a union plumber. My brother in, in 2012 makes the same pay that my, that my dad did in 1974. In 38 years, there's been no increase in that income. But yet there's been a huge increase in the cost of living, as all of you know. So while my dad could build a house in 1970 for $19,000, we know now that a house costs $185,000, $190,000, $200,000. My dad could put gas in a car at 50 cents a gallon. My brother's putting gas at 350 a gallon. And those folks are worried about whether they have enough gas sometimes to get to work the next day, deciding whether or not they can make their mortgage payment if their wife has medical bills or trying to decide whether they should send their child to uh, the doctor or put food on the table that night. We're losing our middle class, and our middle class is dwindling so badly that it's also affecting our small businesses. So when we have a jewelry store in town, or we have a dentist in town, and they are complaining that business isn't good, well, you know, it's not billionaires and millionaires that are coming to their business. It's all of us. And it's all of the folks who are the iron workers and the carpenters and the roofers. And so if the carpenter, on his way home, wants to buy a necklace for his wife for her birthday that night, and he can't afford to stop in that jewelry store, that jeweler isn't going to make any money. And so it is about not only our middle class, but our small businesses. So when we hear the other side talk about what they want to do for small businesses, what they can do for small businesses is make sure that folks can afford to buy their goods and services. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. and that comes from having a strong middle class, and we know what that means drastically. And we know that it means having a good salary. We know that it means having a job that they can rely on. You know, as a child, with my dad as a plumber, we had this wonderful, uh, I had a wonderful childhood. We had this wonderful standard of living. My dad made a really good wage. And so as I was growing up, I didn't worry about whether my dad was going to be able to pay his mortgage, whether he's going to lose his job and not be able to find another one. And children know those things. Children hear those things. So the very children today hear when their parents are worried about losing their house. They're worried about putting gas in their car. And so our children have this really unstable ground under them. They know that things are not good as well as their parents. And it's unconscionable what we have done to the middle class. And so for me, it is about working for the middle class. And as I look around, I know the folks in this room, whether they are part of a union, whether they are part of a small business, we know what that means to have a strong middle class. And so for us this year, we say this every year, this is a critical year. But for us this year, this is a critical year. It is a year that we have to work hard. We have to remind folks really what we stand for. And we do stand for making sure that Medicare and Social Security are strong, that Pell Grants are available for our students to go to college. You know, when the Paul Ryan budget wants to cut food stamps, when it cuts food stamps, it's cutting not only the children who are affected by that, but it also affects our farmers in the fourth district. And so the Paul Ryan budget is just a mean-spirited budget when it wants to do away with Medicare as we know it, and Social Security, and Pell Grants. Those are things that we rely on as middle class families and so very important to us. So this year, it is about us telling our friends and our families, it is about telling our uncle, uh, who just isn't thinking right, what we all stand for. <laughs> I know you all have those uncles. <laughs> and so it is about making sure that folks are listening this year about what it is is important to the peace, very people we know, to our families. And it's the reason I'm running, because again, I have parents who are 76 years old. Medicare and Social Security matter. I have an 18-year-old nephew. Pell Grants matter. You know, in Harrisonville alone, uh, as part of the Rotary, they do a packing the backpacks on the weekends for the school for the kids to have food. In Harrisonville alone, we're in the middle of the country in a rural community. And we have 185 kids every week that take home backpacks. That's unconscionable. It's not right that we have children that are going without food in this country. We're too prosperous and wonderful a country to have what's happening to the middle class continue to happen. So I've kept you too long because it's really hot in here, and I apologize for talking so long. Thank you very much for coming. Really, all of you mean so very much to me. I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you.